Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So I have to take a pause on the multi-band amp, unfortunately, and I have a TL922 over there on the other side of the bench. And uh, more amps coming, so uh, today we have a AL80B I'm working on. I have a head cold, so it wasn't feeling great yesterday, so I unboxed this amp in the, in the Kenwood, so got the green light on both. I'm just waiting on parts for the Kenwood before I can do anything to it. I uh, think needs a lot of work, but you'll get to see all of it in a video. So, a uh, customer that owns this amplifier said that uh, they lost output, continued to see plate current and grid current, just no output. So, and he heard a, a sizzling noise. So, I had potted the tube. Tube looks okay. Um, it's a newer one, has those sealed relays. So, um, I'll ground the grids, start doing that, start grounding them right to the metal. The holes are already here, so why not? Just add a tab and solder it instead of going through the foil underneath and then through the, through the actual uh, standoff. So, I check the air variable cap on the plate side and the, uh, check the SO239s, they're okay. They're like super tight. I've never seen ones that tight, but, okay, so... I'm gonna get to work on this, and I'll uh, I'll be back when it's all finished, and I'll show you guys what I did. So, stay tuned, and see you guys soon. Okay, so I'm back with an update. So one of his gas discharge tubes was shorted, the base of the socket. So I replaced both, grounded the grids directly to the metal. Meter protection diode was also shorted, so he's gonna need a new tube. Past the high pot, but I high pot them when they're cold and it's on its side, so things heat up inside when the filament's lit, and you know, just gives me a rough idea. So I'm not going to take a chance. That's assuming that was the tube that he had in here. If, if he said that's the tube he had in here when the failure occurred, then I'm going to have him order a new one. It's not worth taking a risk. So I'll show you something else. If you look carefully, well first off someone spread the coil a little bit and if you look at this joint right here, you can see the foil and solder are broken so he has an open right there. So that's where the coil connects to the plate blocker assembly and also to the <clears throat> the uh, tune air variable capacitor. So I'm going to give the customer a call, ask, him, ask about the tube, and then I'll fix this. I'll compress the coil a little bit. The turn is basically touching the other turn over here too, you know, so anyway, I'll be back. See you soon. Okay, so I'm back. I talked to the customer real quick. He sent a tube in with the amp and appeared to high pot okay, but you know, I, I didn't tap it or um, have the filament lit, you know, so uh, things can high pot one way when they're cold, another when they're warm. So tube definitely flashed at some point. He's going to purchase a new tube. He said he had put that tube in here a year ago uh, after the, the original tube had flashed. And, um, you know, I don't know if the meter protection diode was messed up, you know, shorted the entire time. He claimed the metering seemed to be working okay, but he didn't change the meter protection diode at any point. He just put a new tube in. And I also found a, a shorted gas discharge tube. So. Getting a brand new tube. I'll show you what I'm, I'm going to do to fix this issue over here. I have to get rid of all this solder right here, but uh, I had no connection on the other side. So I don't know what the story is. I don't know if at the factory or someone else, like the customer said he didn't touch it. I don't know if someone tried to manipulate the coil and they broke the not only the solder joint, but the foil was, was uh, completely open on both sides. So. I cut a couple pieces of copper. I'll put one underneath and one on the top and put the standoff back in, solder it really well to the coil underneath and 
Anyway, I'll show it to you after. It's going to be better than new. So, but uh, you know, something like that's real easy for most to, to miss. But I saw it, and um, I'm going to take care of it, and then we'll go from there. So, see you guys soon. Okay, so that's fixed. Put the piece of copper on the top and the bottom. Soldered it all together, and uh, everything's all re-secured, really tight. So I'm going to clean the rotary switches with the oxy gold and uh, I'll be back. See you soon. Back with the completed Ameritron AL80B. This got a brand new Pentalabs 3500Z. Awesome company. Great customer service over there. Really nice people. So it's all set. Works on all bands. Just have to put the jumpers back to 220. I'm going to change his buck boost jumpers also to a larger gauge wire. I changed the meter protection diode, tightened up on hardware here and there, touched up on some solder joints. I had checked the SO239s, they're good. Tightened up on the screws, they were loose. Changed the gas discharge tubes at the base of the socket, directly grounded each grid connection to the chassis. Clean the output rotary switch with deoxid gold, input rotary switch with deoxid gold. I fixed the back connection between the coil and the plate blocker and also where the junction is for the plate tuner variable cap. So no longer have an open between the coil and the plate blocker and air variable on the plate side. So put a piece of copper strap on each side, put the coil through it and then the screw back through underneath to go into the standoff and then soldered it really well so it's better than new so that's about it so if you need an amplifier repaired please feel free to give me a call the website is amprepairguy.com and my phone number is 203 8924119 please like share and subscribe really appreciate it next stamp you'll see will be the Kenwood luckily I have a few days or so before the parts get here so I can get over this cold or whatever it is I it's hard to work on stuff when you're sick my uh, dog walking around in the background okay thanks for watching have a great day 73